BYU in a similar spot in the fact that it's back in the 8-9 matchup, but it's an unfamiliar situation in the fact that it's the same two teams from last year in the 8-9 matchup. Jason Orr with CBS College Sports. Steve Lapp is glad to be with you here on the NCAA Tournament Previews presented by Brother Printers. And Steve, uh, it's the exact same 8-9 matchup, BYU-Texas A&M from a year ago. But what's different about these two teams this year? Two 6-11 guys that were really good players, gone. DeAndre Jordan from Texas A&M, Trent Playstead from BYU. I've seen BYU play a lot this year live. This is a very perimeter-oriented team. They are one of the best running teams in the country that a lot of people don't know about. Shoot a ton of threes in transition, but also run a very good half-court offense and are solid defensively. This is going to be a very interesting matchup again. It, it should be, and for BYU, a chance for revenge after losing last year's game. Let's take a look at some of the notes from the first round uh, from last year and, and recent tournament notes here. And you see that BYU lost to A&M 67-62 in that first round. 1993, that's the last Cougars NCAA tournament win. They have lost in the first round the last five times they've been in and for Texas A&M 3-0 in the first round the last three years. This is the first time in school history that the Aggies have been to the tournament four straight years. Now, Steve, when we talk about last year's matchup, Joseph Jones was also very good for A&M. He's not there anymore either, uh, but Josh Carter is, and he had 26 points on 6 of 10 from 3. How do they stop him? Boy, he's a tough matchup for them because he's athletic. He's a great shooter. That's a good question. Now, they have Lee Kamard, who's about 6'7", plays on the perimeter, got good size, might be able to contest him well. The other guards aren't real big. Jimmer Fredette's about 6'7". Uh, um, so he's a guy that probably won't be able to guard Josh Carter. So Kamard's going to have to step up defensively. Now, Texas A&M on the other end, they have a great defender in Roland. And Roland has held his, he's always guarding the high score on the other team, has held that guy to 38% shooting for the season. So they have a guy to put on for debt or Kamard that's a great defender. And, and Donald Sloan's another key for Texas A&M. If he can hit some threes, uh, you're talking about a team, if they hit threes, they're going to win this ballgame. But in BYU, you know, I feel like Steve, we say this every single year, when BYU is in the NCAA tournament, people going in don't know much about BYU. Like you said, you've covered them a lot. Uh, when they're good, they're doing what? When they're not good, they're doing what? When they're good, they're running in transition. Not crazy, but they get the ball up with the pass faster than anybody in the country. So that's what they're doing. Now, if they get if they get slogged down in a half-court situation, they're not as good, especially by not having Trent Playstead in the low post who can score. All right, who wins this ballgame? But the last two years, I picked BYU. I think I'm going to pick Texas A&M this year. And uh, this year, one of the differences is they have a center, Chimalu, uh, who is a great, who's a much improved player, averaged 11 points a game, 6'11". I think he's going to be the difference in the game. All right, history is on AM side. It's Thursday in Philadelphia. For more on this game, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. And don't forget, go to NCAA.com to find out more about March Madness on, dem on demand. Every single game from the first round of the championship game, live online for free. For Steve Lapis, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.